Okay, great. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, can't quite see you uh, at the moment, but I uh, hope you can hear me fine. Uh, my name is Janice, and I'm from the Wealth Management Institute at NTU Singapore. Um, I wanted to share with you today uh, the, our program, the Master of Science in Asset and Wealth Management. Um, but before we go into the program proper, I thought I'll give you a very quick uh, intro into WMI or the Wealth Management Institute. And to do that, I have to take you all the way back to 2003 when, uh, you know, the Singapore government had a, uh, you know, uh, 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 had this vision of uh, Singapore becoming a premier wealth management hub. So um, in order to catalyze and, and you know, that, that vision, um, the uh, WMI, Wealth Management Institute, was actually formed um, by Tamasic and GIC with the support of the MAS. Um, and uh, really it was to make sure that we start to develop and nurture a pool of ready talent for the industry, the wealth management industry. Um, since then, we have been instrumental in advancing the capabilities because we're a very applied uh, school. Um, you know, so we've been instrumental in, in accompanying the, you know, basically we, we have been in the journey, very much etched in the journey of, uh, you know, developing talent uh, uh, and, and skilled professionals for the wealth management segment in Singapore. As I said, we're a very practice-based education institute and programs are very aligned uh, to industry needs because we actually work with the industry uh, you know, in terms of our curriculum, in terms of our content. In 2017, um, before that, we were part of Tamasic. In 2017, we were incorporated as an autonomous institute at the Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. Um, yeah. So I wanted to quick, quickly just take you through the kind of uh, school that we are. Uh, you know, some of you may be quite familiar with us, especially if you're from the industry, you may have heard, you, you definitely would have heard of us. But for those of you who are not currently in the industry or, you know, have not heard of us, um, we have actually grown by leaps and bounds from, from, uh, our, uh, from the days that we were founded. As of 2019 alone, we trained about 17,000 finance professionals and they're about uh, uh, across 56 of our programs. And in fact, out of those 56 programs, um, about 50 of those, almost all of our programs are accredited by the Institute of Banking and Finance. Uh, we serve a, uh, uh, about 113 financial institutions across banks, asset managers, trust firms, insurance firms, uh, you know, as well as uh, uh, financial regulator uh, agencies. And, and what do I mean by financial regulator agencies? Basically, these are the central banks and, and the financial regulators yeah, in the region. So um, NTU, being a part of NTU, I think is a wonderful thing to have happened to uh, WMI because we, have, uh, we now have the twin power of a globally renowned uh, university. Um, we are actually the first in Asia Pacific, and these according to uh, uh, QS rankings that were published in June last year, 11th in the world. And for the sixth year running, we have been the top, uh, the world's top young university. Um, you know, and, and basically what this means is, uh, you know, the university is un under 50 years. So actually it's a twin power of a very applied premier um, uh, education from WMI together with the global expertise and, and uh uh, the global standing of NTU. Okay, without further ado, if I could pass you over to the Academic Director, Associate Professor Yogesh Khatri, to take you through the actual program itself. Yogesh? Thank you very much, Janice, and good afternoon to you all. I'm very, very happy that you're joining us today for this uh, info session. Um, let me start by briefly defining what we're trying to do with this program, right? This, this is a program that's post-experience, it's designed to groom future ready industry leaders. So let me kind of try and make my remarks about how we try and do that, right? So in the next slide, we see that our program is designed by the industry, for the industry, and strongly supported by the industry. So you see on the right-hand side, the, the names of some of our sponsors and partners. These are, these are people, these are big name kind of uh, sovereign wealth funds, major players in asset and wealth management who sponsor students on our course. We're also um, partners in the sense that we have company visits with some of these really unique company visits, such as 
Bridgewater, this very um, mystical, one of the largest hedge funds in the world, BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, Blackstone, the largest uh, alternative manager in the world, etc. Um, we have also some of these industry partners um, as um, partnering us on the capstone project. So recent examples include GIC, IMF, Schroders, etc. And on the next slide, slide, we see how this course is not taught necessarily by academics, but rather by distinguished industry practitioners, thought leaders, both in the domestic and international talent pool. So just as just as just a, a subset here, uh, Aaron Lowe, who's a very well-known asset manager, portfolio manager, is the you know, principal of Lumen Advisors. He teaches portfolio management. We have Kelvin Tay, who's the uh, regional CIO at um, UBS. And that's, uh, that's kind of some of the local talent, international talent include uh, Professor Denise and Professor Guido, who are kind of thought leaders in their space. I should modestly mention myself teaching economics, but we also have a, um, uh, an IMF um, senior economist in Singapore teaching crisis cycles and bubbles. We have the head of macro um, research at RDA, one of the biggest sovereign wealth funds in the world, teaching fixed income, et cetera. So that's just some examples of the remarkable distinguished faculty we have. Um, now to go to the next slide, we see how we, we try, we try to make this extremely um, uniquely formatted for working professionals. So we have classes that are taught on alternative weekends. So if you're working full time, you can join the classes. It doesn't mean we only, the only commitment is alternative weekends. Of course, there's a lot, a uh, lot to do in terms of pre-reading, coursework, etc. But um, the, the lectures themselves are every other weekend. Those working full time will have to do a capstone project. Those who are full-time students who leave their jobs to join the program have to do an industry placement for at least three months, ideally six months. So that's the kind of work-friendly format. To turn next to our, um, the next slide would be how we leverage our international partnerships. So we work very hard to partner with some of the best uh, international schools to provide immersive experiences in leading universities in certain areas. So for example, we, we take you to London, to do quantitative trading at Imperial Business School. We take you to New York to do alternative investments at NYU Stern. And we also leverage the strengths of WMI and NTU in the next slide. So of course you all know NTU, it's kind of world-class as Janice mentioned, particularly in the hard sciences. And we, we internalize some of that into, for example, our data science and FinTech, which is essential to the future of the industry. We're also extremely well connected. WMI has a long history and extremely well linked into the industry, which ensures we have leading edge, uh, evolving and always relevant curriculum, but also unparalleled networks, as I mentioned, through our instructors, internships, capstone projects, company visits, etc. And next slide, I, I try and bring all of this together to show this remarkably well-rounded and forward-looking program. And just as an example of how we continuously refine and improve the program, uh, for the first two intakes, we had actually 12 core modules and then an asset management track or a wealth management track. And we came to understand that actually a lot of the stuff in the track should be in the core. So we now have this you know, substantive core and the electives can be chosen from asset or wealth management. So you have even more flexibility. Um, last but not least about our program is is the participants, right? We have this remarkable elite core and alumnus. You know, our students are selected with a view to their potential industry uh, leadership. They typically have, you know, 10 years of experience in the mid thirties. They're mostly industry sponsored by the names I mentioned. And uh, we're also well represented by regional regulators and reserve managers, which are sponsored by Tomasic, which provides diversity, policy insights and the international networks. So I hope to be brief, this convinces you we've created one of the best designed and best value uh, programs on the market. And Janice will talk a little bit about how that is the case. Over to you, Janice. Thank you, Yogesh. So um, as uh, Yogesh had already shared with you, you know, the, the curriculum is one that is really recognized by the industry. We work together closely with the industry 
In fact, practitioners teach uh, many of the, the modules, uh, you know, as you have seen, you know, in, when Yogesh had shared earlier. Now, the reason for this is because um, everything that we do at the heart of what we do at WMI, we try very hard to make sure that we are very tightly aligned to the skills framework for financial services as established by MAS and IDF. And um, so majority of the modules within the masters are actually fully accredited by IBF, which means that locals, uh, meaning Singaporeans and PRs, actually you enjoy exceedingly generous uh, funding subsidies when you take the program. Now, we, we accredit our, our program based on the module or uh, based on modules uh, because of uh, certain funding caps that are in place. So if you will bear with me a bit, I'll explain a little. Um, you know, if, if, we, if we had uh, accredited the entire program, the maximum uh, that you would get in terms of subsidies is $7,000, which is a funding cap for locals. Um, but because we do it on a modular basis, and now we have got uh, 95% uh, uh, subsidy this, this year, for the rest of this year, Next year is 90%, and then only in the following year, it's back to the 70 and 90%, depending on your age and depending on whether or not you are a Singaporean citizen or you are a PR. Um, you know, that, that causes your net, um, or rather, you know, the, the resultant amount that you actually, the real amount that you actually pay in terms of fees is actually less than half of, the actual fee. Today, our program cost will cost you about 60000 before GST. Um, you know, even at the 70% mark, it's already a little more than half of the fees of that 60000 uh, back to you, right? Um, so there's very, very generous uh, uh, funding subsidies from the government for this program. Um, our admission requirements uh, are essentially, uh, uh, essentially a good bachelor's degree. We ask for minimum of two years full-time work experience, um, but typically, as, as Yogesh had also shared with you earlier, um, most of our students on average have about 10 years of experience on average. Right? We do have some who, are, uh, who have a, a, little, a fewer years of experience, but everybody minimum two years. Um, if there, uh, if, if, the, if you didn't take your undergraduate degree uh, in English, then we will require TOEFL and IELT or IELTS. We generally want to see a good GMAT or GRE score. Um, we, have, uh, we, we can be flexible in terms of uh, GMAT, doing the GMAT, but then that really depends on the depth of your experience uh, and typically only those very, very seasoned uh, industry uh, practitioners uh, do we give that uh, exercise that flexibility for? Okay. So this, I think, would be a great, uh, I think this is a slide that everybody will be very interested in, in terms of what the actual fees are, which I shared earlier in terms of funding subsidies. So net-net, it's about, uh, you know, for about 14,000 thereabouts, okay, uh, in terms of fees, the real fees to you after all the subsidies have come back to you. For the international students or, or those on EP, basically non-Singaporeans non, non and non-PRs, uh, the fees including GST is 64200 okay. uh, Some key dates. Um, online application is still happening at the moment. We are still accepting applications. Uh, interviews have, have already started. Our selection process has already started. We do this on an ongoing basis. Uh, we will have until end of May. And then we want to uh, commence matriculation by the end of June. Okay, so these are the dates you want to watch for if you are keen on this program. Uh, if you have any questions at all uh, that you are, you know, if you are not able to ask or if you are too shy to ask in this forum, um, I've left our email address as well as phone number for you to contact us. Uh, you know, we, we, we are happy to give you some friendly advice as well, you know, whether this program would be suited for you. And, whether, and, and what can you do with this program?